So here we are again on a Monday morning, and we are continuing in the book of Philippians. Um, last week, Paul emphasized the emptiness of putting our confidence in the flesh. And uh, he, he talked about his own accomplishments. And it may have sounded kind of prideful where we ended, but today we're going to see um, how he is not prideful about it at all. We're going to see how he is emphasizing the surpassing value of knowing Christ and the joy that he feels in Christ that makes his life new and puts all those other things into perspective. He says this in Philippians 3, 7 through 11. He says, but whatever were gained to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What's more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. What a powerful passage. You can see Paul does not take any pride in those former uh, activities of his. But he talks about the, the value of knowing Christ and how it surpasses anything he may have accomplished in the world. His fame, his degrees, his wealth, his education. He did, Jesus did, what Paul could not do for himself. And because of that, Paul will know now the joy of Jesus' resurrection. He says, I give up all those other things gladly in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ. You know, I can't help but think as I read this that if we grasped this in the same way Paul did, that it would revolutionize our lives. It would change our lives so completely. I think, and I'll say this, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I will say this, I think we Christians in general, especially here in the United States, we tend to take Christ for granted. You know, there are a few reasons I think this happens. Uh, why we kind of devalue Christ from what Paul puts up for us here. First is, uh, sometimes I think we don't recognize our own need for God's grace. We, we have such a culture in the United States of positive thinking and making people feel good about themselves that I think for the most part, you know, we think too much of ourselves. In fact, we think we deserve God's grace. We don't understand how empty and how useless we were. He says, I considered everything else garbage in order to obtain Christ. We think to ourselves, well, I know I'm a sinner, but I'm actually not that bad a person. You know, I don't think I needed that much saving. Somehow, it's a mentality we get into, and it causes us to not value Jesus as much as we should. Paul says, work out your salvation with what? fear and trembling. Why fear and trembling? Because we realize where we were, what we were saved from. Remember what you were without Christ. You know, we won't properly value the gift if we don't understand how much we needed it. Second, we don't recognize the cost of God's grace. We don't recognize how much it cost Jesus to do this. Somehow, we think that because Jesus is God, the incarnation was a cakewalk for him. We don't take seriously, I don't think. We gloss over his physical, emotional, even spiritual suffering for our sake. You know, I think sometimes we even avoid thinking about it. We don't like to watch or read or think about the things that really emphasize how Christ suffered for us. But I think it's important that we spend time meditating on those things because I think it will well up a thankfulness in our hearts. And again, just as we won't properly value the gift if we don't understand how much we need it. We also won't properly value the gift if we don't know how much it costs the person to give it to us. And finally, I think we devalue the gift because sometimes, you know, if someone already has their heart set on something else and 
then they don't value what was given to them that doesn't match up with what they were expecting. Somebody's going to give you a wonderful gift, and, and maybe it cost them a lot to do it. Maybe they put a great deal of effort into getting it. But if you sort of had your heart set, you were all excited and ready for them to give you something else, and suddenly what they give you isn't that. It, it doesn't matter what they did. It devalues the gift. And unfortunately, I think sometimes we're so obsessed with this world, and we want gifts that will please us here and now. We, we expect and are obsessed and we say, why doesn't God give me these things that I want here in this world? And so because we want those things, we don't value enough the gift that he has given us, which surpasses all value. We keep clinging to our old worthless junk. So as you pray today and you're thinking about these things, I'd like you to just meditate on three questions. Number one, um, what was or what is your condition apart from Christ? Just think about for that for a while. Meditate on it, be honest about it, and understand what you are apart from Christ. Second, meditate on what Christ did. What price did he pay to provide you the opportunity to have that grace? Think about it seriously. Think about how you would feel just having to go back and live in the first century. Now, as a person in the 20th century, what it would be like for you, let alone to die on a cross and to go through all that suffering, just to go back and live in that time and have to do that. Imagine the Son of God coming down, emptying himself, and going back and living in the first century and dying on a cross for you the spiritual, emotional, and physical suffering that he went through. And finally, ask yourself, are you obsessed with the things of this world to the point that you value them more than the surpassing worth of knowing Christ? Just ask yourself those questions and pray about them. And I believe in the answers to those questions, Paul tells us that we will find joy if we truly understand those answers properly. So God bless you and may you enjoy your day and we'll see you next week.